we're going to design a pediment. It's going to be on a rake, and we're going to design the three moldings that go with the pediment from level to rake back to level. And we're going to design the size of the molding based off of the material that we're going to work with, and we're going to draw that out now. The important thing to remember is you always have to start with a good drawing. We're going to start off with a baseline. From the baseline, we're going to determine what the pitch is. In this case, we're going to be doing a 312. So we're going to come over from this mark. We're going to measure out 12 inches. From here, we're going to come up 3 inches. And this is our rake angle. So we didn't have to calculate anything. This is the bottom of the rake line. All the rest of our drawings come off of this line. Now we're going to determine the size of the molding. We're going to do that based on the material that we have to work with. So given that this is our width, The height of the molding is going to be a proportion of its width. In our case, we picked a 2 to 3. So we're going to take half this distance, 1, 2, and we're going to come down 3 parts, 1, 2, 3. So this then is going to become the overall rectangular shape of the block that we were going to start with. This is the size of the blank that we would use for the rake molding. We've chosen to start with the rake molding because that would most likely be the piece of molding we would buy. It's the longest piece. We want to only have to produce the two pieces that are short. And the other two moldings, the horizontal, the upper horizontal, and the lower horizontal piece, we're going to make. So now we're going to determine the moldings on the rake. So we have to uh, put the height of the molding onto our rake angle. And this then is the height of the blank that we predetermined it's going to be. And we'll draw a line that's parallel to this line along here. So we've got this height here. We now need this projection here. And that's right here. So then that becomes our block. And from this block, or blank, we're going to determine the shape of the molding. We're going to start off with a very simple profile. Our overall dimension is a 2 to 3. We're going to make the molding itself proportional to this uh, rectangular shape. And I've already marked these out, so we are at about 1 7th the overall height. And this is arbitrary. Could be a 7th, could be an 8th. Uh, you look at it, see if you like the look of it. But generally, if things are proportional, they have a more pleasing appearance. So we've laid this out at approximately 1 7th. And that's going to be our fillet. The fillet size remains constant throughout the molding, whether it's the rake molding or the level molding. So we're going to draw that line in so that when we draw the other two moldings, it stays constant. This is going to be a simple OG curve. So we want to then draw in the angle of the curve, the molding. So we're connecting the two lines here. We want to find the halfway point between the two of them because one of them is going to be concave, the other be convex, and we like those two curves to flow together nicely. In our case, we're going to pick the middle. You don't necessarily have to. You can change the look by determining where you would like that transition along this line, but you would like it to be proportional if you choose other than a one-to-one. -one. You can choose a two-to-three. 
uh, or any other proportion that you happen to like the look of. So well, we're coming just a tiny bit. And this is our halfway point right there. We're going to find the center point from where we can take a compass and draw those lines. So we're going to take a little hash mark here, a little hash mark right here. Should have come just a bit farther there. And we're going to sweep an arc to here. We'll now do the same thing for the other half of the molding. We'll take our two hash marks from here to here, and we'll sweep an arc in this direction. So the next step is going to be to draw parallel lines at each transition point. So when we draw the other two moldings, we have a guideline to lay out those uh, shapes, because they're not going to be able to be drawn with a compass any longer. They will not be a true radius. They'll be an elliptical shape because we have now altered from 90 degrees to our rake angle. This is the transition point from concave to convex. So we're going to find the midpoint, which is right here. And the midpoint, which is right here. And we're going to draw some more reference lines. The more reference lines you draw, the more points that you'll have for completing your transitions or your, your curves within reason. Now this is pretty simple, so we're just going to draw the one for each. We're now going to draw the lower molding that would be running on the, the lower end of the slope. That is a perpendicular. Although this line was drawn perpendicular, it's actually plumb. The projection of the molding has to be the same on all three. This is our projection. It is the thickness of our piece. We're going to slide this down to where this distance is the thickness of our material. And we'll draw our line. The, this is the face of the fillet, so that's plumb. We can now draw in these two curves. Take a straight line. These are our two transition points. We want to have the distance has to be the same. Regardless of the shape of the molding, the projection remains constant. So we're going to put in our little mark here. This is slightly off, they should be the same. So something shifted slightly in the drawing. In this case, I'm going to freehand this curve in. If it were more complex, we would have drawn in more lines here. So that would give us three or four or six reference points along here rather than the single reference points. And hopefully you can see the dotted line that if we had a number of them, it would do that. So we're going to Draw that curve like so, and draw that curve in like that. And that is the lower rake mold, or lower molding that will mate up to the rake molding. Now we're going to draw in the third molding. We've drawn in the level molding that's at the lower part. We've drawn in the rake molding that comes up. We need to produce the top molding, which goes the other direction. Just like this one, it has to be plumb to our ground. So we'll draw that in. Again, the projection has to be the same. So we're going to take that measurement, lay it out there. We're going to come to right there. So this distance is the same as this distance, which is the same as this distance. Since the upper fillet is plumb, we're going to draw that in as plumb. Oops. And just like before, we're going to draw a straight line to connect our reference points. We've got our center transition here. We've got, again, this distance will be the same on this molding as well. 
and the projection will be here. We will draw in freehand the curve again. The same uh, rules apply if we wanted a more accurate drawing, we would have more lines in. So these are the three moldings that we will need to produce the level run to the rake run to the upper level run. This is exactly what they will look like. You'll notice that the projection of each of the moldings is the same because we're using the same thickness material. What changes is the height or the elongation of the molding and that is based on our rake angle. So this one is different from that one, which is radically different from this one. Since they're different, this is why we cannot use one molding for all three pieces. Each one has to be unique. This then will be the size of the blank for this piece. It will be the size of the blank for this piece. And this will be the size of the blank or so that's the size of material that you would need to produce each of the moldings.